It's that time of year again. The world's top materials researchers, students, and exhibitors are arriving in Boston for the Materials Research Society's annual fall meeting. The Heinz Convention Center has long served as a meeting point for MRS members, and this year's no exception. But no matter the venue, MRS TV is always there to share the highlights of every meeting. Hi, I'm Katie Brace, your host for the fall season of MRS TV, the daily show dedicated to MRS conferences. I'll be here all week to share the lectures, sessions, and awards that you just can't miss. In today's show, we'll hear from our fall meeting chairs to see what events they're most looking forward to. Then we'll learn how to apply machine learning, data science, and artificial intelligence to materials research concepts. Plus, we'll take a look at some of the top innovators across materials science, from New Mexico to Illinois and all the way to Australia. But first, let's check in with you, the MRS attendees, to find out what you're most excited for at this year's meeting. Uh, for this conference, um, I'm most excited about uh, basically the connections being made with other attendees and um, yeah, also some of the talks. Um, so I'm doing plasma physics and there's some talks regarding plasma physics and or plasmas in general and uh, material research. I'm excited about an entire symposium dedicated to thermoelectric materials. Because I'm a thermoelectrician and at my school there aren't a lot of us, so I'm very excited to meet people from all around the world working on thermoelectrics. I'm looking forward to listen to like presentations, especially about ferroelectricity and majorly also in uh, neon ion milling. To speak with a lot of people and to get new insights into other research fields and also to get a broader overview to what I could do next, for example. MRS now offers a free one-year dues renewal option for recent doctoral graduates. This offer, available only once per member, is designed to support our next generation of researchers as they transition from student to career professionals and will include all benefits and advantages of MRS membership. The next membership cycle begins January 1st. Check your inbox. Details will be sent by email to those who are eligible. Donate to the causes you care about. The MRS Foundation supports diversity and inclusion projects and programming, early career and student programs, JMR prizes, and more. Every donor is important and every gift makes an impact. Find out more at mrs.org foundation. Your opinion matters. Please take a minute during this very busy week to answer three quick questions about the 2022 MRS Fall Meeting. To respond, use the MRS Meeting app. You'll find the Attendee Satisfaction Poll on the app homepage. The poll closes on Thursday evening. To view the complete public health statement for this meeting, scan the QR code on this slide. The responsibility for a safe and healthy event environment is shared by every meeting participant. Thank you for adhering to our health and safety precautions. MRS engages members across generations to advance their careers and promote materials research and innovation. Whether you are seeking a new career opportunity, committed to creating more inclusive and equitable environments, or gaining recognition for educational and career achievements, MRS is here to support your career advancement goals. Free webinars and virtual workshops are offered year-round, covering a wide range of topics from preparing for a job search to getting your work published to understanding unconscious bias and so much more. Learn more at mrs.org slash career central. After two years of organization, it's fantastic to finally be here in person at the event and to see the MRS Fall Meeting come back again in such vibrancy, in particular after the two years of the pandemic. Meeting chairs set the agenda for the meeting, so we need to look at all the symposia and make sure that they represent the full spectrum of materials research. We really want to ensure that we have diversity in all possible senses, both in terms of the 
uh, portfolio of research that is presented and the participants in the meeting itself. So I volunteered for this role because I've been to so many of these MRS fall meetings in the past. I've given uh, talks here, I've interacted with the, with the speakers and I've organized three of the symposia in the past and I've really benefited from this both professionally and personally and this was one way in which I could give something back to this MRS community and of course it's a great honor to be chosen for this role as well. I am very excited for a lot of the high-level talks, uh, especially Jenny Nelson's plenary talks. I'm really looking forward to all of the Symposium X talks, but then I'm also looking forward to the poster sessions and seeing uh, latest research presented by younger members of the community. My advice to future MRS meeting chairs is go for it. You know, this is probably the most exciting, stimulating and important meeting. They are said the best meeting in terms of material science in the world. So, you know, it's yours to shape. Go for it. The Center for Integrated Nanotechnologies helps the international research community perform world-leading research in the area of nanoscience and nanotechnology. CINT offers unique open access to world-class scientists and equipment in one major way. It's available free of charge. There is no better place to build a scientific career than a national user facility. It's a really exciting environment to do research. SINT stands for the Center for Integrated Nanotechnology. And we have two facilities, one at Sandia National Laboratories and our gateway facility up at Los Alamos uh, National Laboratory. This is a really exciting time for nanomaterials research. And that's because there's a demand for new materials at the national level. To get access to SINT, all you need to do is write a two or three page innovative science proposal or nanoscience proposal. Uh, that it's reviewed externally, and then once that proposal is accepted, then you're able to access all the capabilities at SINT for free. What I really enjoy about being in the SINT environment is having experts in anything you can think of right around the corner from your office. The Digimat program is a graduate program at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign, focusing on research at the intersection of material science and data informatics. The program's work is crucial in the face of a data-driven materials revolution. The NCSA is advancing the use of computing to solve problems in sciences, engineering, uh, humanities, uh, as well as working with industry. Digimat stands for Data Informatics Graduate Intern Traineeship in Materials at the Atomic Scale. In this program, we train PhD students at the interface of material science and data science. Our PhD students get exposed to industry problems and problems at national labs. They get a, a broader view of what researchers are working on and how their own skills can contribute to solve these more challenging and broader problems. It's targeting this intersection of two really different fields and combining them for the first time and teaching the next generation of scientists and engineers on how to best harness data in materials work. We'll help plant the seeds for a new way of thinking about materials and data science and the, all the partnerships that come out of that. Interdisciplinary efforts are key in driving scientific progress. In the materials world, it's imperative to consider how new innovations in technology can impact research and development. This year's tutorial in machine learning is setting out to show scientists where the intersection of these ideas can take them. 
applying machine learning to materials, uh, materials data, materials research is very important these days. Uh, you know, this field kind of really, you know, came into being about 10 years ago. It's all about learning from data, materials data. So we have a lot of historical data, both experimental and computational. And anybody who's getting started in material science and is looking to do materials design and discovery has to use data science related approaches at this, at this moment. It's just a much faster way of doing design. You know, the Edisonian approach wherein you go and test different materials, you know, until you find success is no longer the best way to go. So it is widely accepted that, you know, these uh, these ML data science AI related approaches are seriously the future, are the way to go. Autonomous experiments are the future and they are built on machine learning and data science. Now that's where this tutorial comes in. So we realize that, you know, a lot of people are using machine learning in material science, but a lot of people are still not. A lot of people, especially students, you know, beginner students, do not quite know, you know, what it is like and how easy it is to pick it up, uh, especially. So what we're trying to do with this tutorial is to give people a basic introduction. Here are the essential concepts. Here is, here is what you need to know, like the nuts and bolts, okay? It's very simple. You don't need to know all the theory behind it. Take these uh, codes, take these scripts, take these not notebooks that we have, apply it to your data set. Here are the basic concepts behind it. So anybody, any experimentalist, any computational person, any material scientist can now take it, start using it for their problem. So that is, that is the idea. So I cover essential concepts of, you know, what are the types of machine learning uh, and the methods, specific methods like neural networks or other regression methods that, that you may apply, uh, classification methods, etc. And then I give a, a detailed example from my own research, which is on perovskites. So I present, I show people how you can visualize the data and how you can train simple regression models, how you can improve these models, then how you can use these models to discover new materials. Uh, in the next part of the tutorial, we cover uh, Gaussian process regression, which is a specific type of regression method, and active learning. After that, we are going to cover neural networks in some detail. Neural networks are their whole field. You know, they are, neural networks are used everywhere, like self-driving cars you know, are using some sort of neural networks, for example. So it's, a, it's really a whole day where we are covering a few essential concepts that we think are the most important. It's a very exciting field. If you don't do machine learning, I encourage you to get into it. I encourage you to read many of these review papers that, that are out there. And, you know, it's, it's very interesting. The U.S. Army Engineer Research and Development Center is the R&D arm of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. We'll find out about their five major areas of work, military engineering, installations and operational environments, civil works and water resources, geospatial research, and engineering and engineered resilient systems. The Engineer Research Development Center is the R&D arm of the Army Corps of Engineers. And the organization has evolved throughout history to address all of the major challenges that our nation has faced on infrastructure, on security, on energy, all of the big challenges, both military and, and civil. Here at the URDIC, we are largely focused on trying to advance science as an integrator. So we want to bring in multiple advancements from different industries, from different parts of the engineering and scientific community, and see how we can bring those technologies to bear to address the grand challenges that we have within our portfolio. So whether it's synthetic biology, it's data science and artificial intelligence, it's advanced manufacturing, all of these new types of innovations, as they scale up, as they become more cost effective and at a higher level of readiness, how can we integrate those into our mission and into engineered systems that will help us solve the nation's problems. Researchers at Chicago's largest public research university are working to revolutionize battery technology. With major grants from the National Science Foundation, the Nanoscale Physics Group at UIC is working with cutting edge instrumentation to examine materials at the atomic structure and at extreme temperatures, all with the goal of advancing renewable energy production and storage. I love studying material science at UIC because there is such good opportunities for me to get my hands on state-of-the-art research projects as well as instrumentation. UIC is the, the largest public research university in the city of Chicago uh, and we are also a minority serving institution. The nanoscale physics group at UIC focuses on examining materials at the atomic structure and 
We also look at these materials at extremes of temperature. The group focuses on materials characterization um, for, of, of materials that are used in renewable energy production, storage, as well as address problems in fundamental against matter physics, including magnetism, superconductivity, and two-dimensional materials. I've learned so much from experts in my group on uh, imaging and analysis. I just love being here. <laughs>
We'll be back tomorrow for interviews with MRS President Carolyn Duran, our Kavli lecturer Jenny Nelson, and so much more. Until then, I'm Katie Brace, and this is MRS TV.